And now we should be in West Clock Town. Good. Good editing. Awesome. Uh, I don't know why I talked to you. It's literally the same thing on any one of the exits, except they change which direction you're facing. But we gotta have a sword, so we're gonna have to wait till we can de-transform back into a human or something, I don't know. So this is the bank, as you can probably tell. Deposit rupees. It's it's nice that this game has this, because, I mean, a lot of Zelda games sort of, like, you have, like, just have a full rupee pouch and you have nothing to do with it. So it's a nice place to have when you have full rupees. And yeah, drop a couple off, you know. Might need them for when you're trying to get all the heart pieces or whatever. All those dumb shooting galleries and... Ugh. Like, bomb chew bowling and all that crap. It's just the worst. But it's nice to have a nice steady supply of rupees. So you don't have to worry about getting screwed over. So yeah, I like that there's a bank. Basically, uh, too long didn't read. Yeah, I like the bank in this game. It also comes in useful for a later thing, which I don't know why I'm trying to keep secret now, because it's pretty obvious what it is, especially since this game is like 15 years old, but we'll get to that when we get to that. I like the end of this video. So for now, we're almost done with the long series of events that we have to actually get into the tower to go confront Skull Kid, but... For now, it looks like the day is changing from the first day to the second day. Well, now it's morning. So let's just edit, I guess. So if we go back to the observatory, we can talk to this scarecrow. And, well, see, if we dance with him, he can move, we can go forward in time. About six hours or so, or twelve, some, yeah, it's twelve. Well, to night time, so it's like twelve for us right now, but anyway. Since we don't have many events left in the sequence of events, I'm just going to skip ahead to the third day. Anyway, I skipped a third day night, but I had to show you that little cutscene thing. So we can't skip forward anymore because, uh, well, as you can see, Scarecrow's ditching us. And he will always do this on the third day. But he's implying that there is a song we can learn that will let us control time. Sounds interesting, but we have nothing to play, so let's get the hell out of here. Very slowly. Apparently I didn't edit this or anything, so that's cool. Just make this video longer. Whatever. So yeah. I know there's not a lot to talk about in this part, but it's basically just... Like, a linear series of events that you have to deal with, and nothing really varies at all. But, we're almost done with it. Right now we gotta go back to South Clock Town. So let's do that, I guess. <gasps> oh god. I don't know why we went up there. I should have just gone down the stairs. I guess it's a kind of shortcut. And that door, that entrance door thing way back there, the whole black void thing, also leads to South Clock Town, so I don't know why I took that and went the longer route. But for now, we gotta go over to this Deku shrub thing. And we can go in it now, because we got the, we traded the moons tier or something. I don't know. And we got nothing to do for the next four hours, so I guess we should just look at the moon. And it gets closer. It's very noticeable on the third day. Well, yeah, the final day, for obvious reasons.
I'm trying to remember the point, like, okay, thanks, thanks, Tattle. Anyway, or Tail, I don't remember which one you are. I think you're Tattle. Anyway, I don't even remember, like, is there a reason why you can only open up the clock tower on the day of the festival? Is it just plot convenience? It's probably just plot convenience, because, I mean, it's a clock tower, so something's gonna go wrong eventually, and, oh, we can't fix it until the day of the festival. Hey, it's a fucking ocarina. Yeah, Tattle, I was right. Yes! Well, this is kind of sort of an issue. So, I mean, we got five minutes to figure out this puzzle, which is relatively simple, and I'm pretty sure Tattle actually tells you if you don't get it quick enough. But yeah, just pop him with a bubble, stun him, so now we can get our ocarina back. Awesome. Great. Let's just make this dramatic. Well, thank God, we can die with the momentum from Princess Zelda. Great. Okay, some speedrunning time right now. There we go. Slow as hell. Oh my god, if you watch speedruns of this game, like, it's ridiculous how fast they do those, uh, all the songs. It's like, do 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 And I mean, for the song of time, I can basically do it that fast. Just because it's muscle memory. But, like, they do it so fast, and they do it for, like, every friggin' song. It's like, oh my god. I mean, they're speedrunners, so they, like, know this game like the back of their hand, but... I don't know. Well, anyway, I wonder what we have to do now. And if you don't get it yet... More time, eh? Oh, we just learned a song. Ugh, God. At least it's not just, well, I mean, it's a puzzle song, but it's not really a puzzle puzzle song. And I love that each of the masks in this game has a different instrument. Oh, by the way, let's, this is me trying to speedrun it. Okay, now I go slow as fuck. Because I can't remember the, like, GameCube controls. X, Y, A, Z, yeah. You can use those, I guess. It's kind of weird. But, you can also just use the C stick. But since it's a stick, I don't like to use it. Because if you're going up and you just so happen to tilt it to the right or left, 
a bit too much, it'll register as the right or left C button, and it's like, eh. So I only really use it for up, because there is no up on the game. On the GameCube controller. Why is that so hard to say? Besides the pressing up on the C stick, but it helps. So if you forgot what's happened in the past, like, two parts, that's basically what happened. Oh, that was the precious thing? Ah. Oh. I mean, it's like the only other friggin' item we saw on Link. So, I guess it had to be, but whatever. Let's go become human again. I love how erratically the Happy Mask salesman moves. I mean, it's kind of like he's putting on different masks. Eh? Eh? But I, but so far the funniest one is when he just, like, f gets this giant organ out of nowhere. And that just so happens to be a mask, I guess. Now, this is a very important song for the entire game. Sort of fits the theme of the game, I guess. Which is healing. Healing the world that's been, like, destroyed by Skull Kid. But, yeah. We'll get into that when we get into that. Once we get more masks and stuff, I'll start explaining that better, but... For now... Got our first mask! Even though that's not the jingle that played, just ignore me. Yeah. Deku's alright, I guess. The others are much better, though. You really stop using Deku except for, like, one little place in the game. But you can almost continually use the other two that we're gonna get. If you don't know already, this game is almost 15 years old, guys. time to learn that you don't fuck over the happy mask salesman. Oh, backstory guys. Strap on in. Oh, great. So, basically, as you can tell right now, we're basically do, like, fixing his mistake 
of actually getting the mask and like taking it out of its sealed state. So great, the entire game is just trying to fix this dude's misdoing. <laughs> But I guess we gotta do it, cause we're the hero and stuff. Oh well, we'll have fun along the wet way. <laughs> Much more fun than Connor will. Jesus Christ. Anyway, so, see you next time when we actually start doing some crap. Actually start doing some crap. Actually start doing some crap.